Hello. Oh, I had to put the dogs in their crate. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm gonna close the door too. Hang on. <laughs> so do we hi, do we we have eight minutes to decide what we're gonna talk about? Okay. So I love that we're just like, we're just gonna go and do this. <laughs> I mean, what we did before was just pick one slide and talk about it. Yeah. Or what do you want to do? Well, I think that's good. I think, I think, I mean, if I think of any podcasts that I've done that I've liked, usually the first one is just kind of like an intro to what we're going to do. Like, right. Who, okay, 30 minutes. What's that? Are we going to talk 30 minutes, 60 minutes? What do you think? Have a plan? I don't know. Probably. I mean, if we say 60 minutes, then we're going to run out of stuff to talk about. If we say 30, we're going to go over yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yes. Ke Kevin says, let's do that. I think like half an hour is are usually pretty good, right? Like, um, I don't know. Go over, yeah, that's fine. What's that? I was saying, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, right? Like, and if it goes over, it goes over. Nothing worse than sitting there and you're just like, uh, now what? Yeah. Now what do you say? Let's see if this light helps. I feel like I'm in the dark. Okay, so I logged into uh, Instagram on my phone to, okay. to the FSM account. Yeah. But I don't okay. know what to do. So when I go live, um, like your people will join and then you can just say like request to join my live. <laughs> and then, and then okay. so you'll need the phone propped up near Carol's computer so we can see Carol. Right. Okay. Outside my skill set. Or I can just chat briefly and send them over to the Zoom too, or Facebook Live, however. Do you know what I mean? We could send it, do Facebook Live and Instagram Live at the same time, right? That's what yeah. we're trying to do. So yeah. I've got so I've got Facebook right here ready to just I'm just gonna start the live thing and then just let it record. Yeah. <laughs> so you ready? Yay. Oh, ready? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go give me six minutes. Yeah, I was gonna say we'll go on Instagram live at like I because I put it on my feed. We're gonna start at four. And normally with these things, like it takes people a few minutes. You just don't want to be sitting there with dead space for like five minutes going, so what's up, everybody? Where is everybody? Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I read that about seven times what you wrote. It's it's a thing, right? Yeah. And I completely forgot that I'd written it. And I was trying to clean things up off my desktop and things I never teach. It's like, what's that? It's intense. I think, I don't know whether to read it or do it as a Q&A at the advanced or it, it would take probably 15 minutes to read it. Yeah. And maybe do it at a, at a podcast someplace in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And get your reaction. Do we have a, a way of getting uh, questions? <laughs> there should be able to get questions on your, um, your hosting. So it should come up on the chat if they joined that way. Some people will put it on Instagram live. Like they'll just throw the questions up on there too. So if I get any, I'll read them to you. And okay. I think that's probably the best way. I have a couple questions that I had from the last like webinar that I did that I wouldn't mind asking you. Okay. And then we can maybe like go back and forth with some of those frequencies. So we can talk about that. Maybe talk about what our why is, right? What, what we're doing. <laughs> uh, I, had, I had an interview with the Spooky Two people in China so just to let you know, there are people on listening. Oh, this. there are people <laughs> on last night. I had, no, um, on this right now. On now, had, well, we're and, live now. Apparently. Well, just on Zoom. On Zoom. So we, I had an interview with the Spooky Two folks in China last night. And he said, what made you keep going with, um, with FSM? Why yeah. you've persisted for 25 years. How, why, why would you do that? Why would yeah. anybody stick with it? And my response was, well, at first we treated myofascial pain and then 
two weeks later, we healed a, a seven centimeter, five millimeter deep diabetic wound in two, that had been there for three years. We healed it in two weeks. And then we treated nerve pain. And then the year after that, we treated full body pain from fibro. It's like, once you can do those things, how could you possibly stop? Right. It's not, why did you keep going? It's how could you stop? And I think that's what I want to talk about. And (laughs) so we'll pause. We'll pause. I'm going to start the Instagram live right away. I'm going to do it right now. We've got 22 people already on waiting to go. Wow. Okay. Hi, everybody. We are about to go live on Instagram. So we'll wait for Dr. McMakin to join us in just two seconds. We've got Facebook Live, Instagram Live, Zoom. We're all live. And we're, wow, we're looking at my profile on Facebook. Hi, guys. But you can't see Kim. What's up with that? (laughs) That's not okay. Yeah, I don't know how to bring Kim into it yet. We might have to try that on the next one. (laughs) Okay, no problem. I'm just trying to see who's on. Camera so it faces her. Then you pick up both of us. I, I, I would need it to be about right here. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> Out in the middle. Unless there's a, well, you uh, guys are going to get my left profile, which is not the best anyway. I'm just saying. So anyway. I like that too, actually. Oh, we're telling everybody is on uh, Instagram Live. It says we're telling your followers that you started a live video. So when you are on... Oh, we've got some people joining already. So we're waiting for you to join. And then, so Kevin, when you're on, oh, there you go. I'm gonna, you just joined. So I need you to request to join me. So you should be able to hit it and say, request to join Kim's live. Request. He did it. Yay. View the request, go live with you. And let's, maybe right there. there we go. Let's see. Are you on? Camera? Enable microphone. Oh, yeah. Enable. At least camera. microphone. Okay. Oops. I'm going to resend it to you here. Hold on just a second. I okay. just have to turn on the microphone up for the, on the settings. Lots of settings. Back Lots to Instagram. Of- okay. <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, everybody. Okay, we're back on there. What do I need? Oh, request to join. There we go. Send request. Your request was sent. All right. We just got to get you going here. There. I'm going to do it this way. See if we can't get you on here. I hear beeping. So what what we're doing once we're waiting for everything to... Oh, it says you're unable to join my live. So I don't know. We'll get all the bugs worked out. But what we're doing is we're starting our first ever podcast. That's amazing. Um, It's so amazing. So we're going to try to get some of the bugs worked out here to get Dr. McMakin to join us live on Instagram. But we will be recording this and you can jump into the Zoom. It's on Facebook Live right now. And we're going to be talking about all things fun and frequency and about our lives. So while we get the bugs worked out, um, just kind of sit tight and um, we'll try to get her back on here. And we're also doing this through Facebook and Zoom. We should tell people that why we're actually doing this. Kim and I meet about once every two weeks, once a month and talk for an hour. And most of the time we, or more, And most of the time we go through the slides so that she gets the backstory on some of the slides. So when she's teaching it, she has more depth. And what we found is we actually um, uh, just enjoy talking. And then last time we were together, she said, why don't we do this as a podcast? So the spooky two guy from China (laughs) last night, there you are. We think. Oh, there's a bit of kickback. There's an echo. That's not good. Yeah, I can. There's no echo now. He asked. Something has to change. 
Whitey Lynch from Ireland. Oh, this is so cool. There's, there are so <laughs> many people that I haven't seen in so many years just because of the travel and distance and whatever. So one of the things I want to know great, um, is how it is that you got started with FSM. That is a great story people should know. My, my, oh, my I think that's story. my, I think that's the, ooh, I think there's too much kickback on Instagram. Why don't we go off Instagram and head everybody over to Zoom? There's too much kickback right now, I think. Yeah, that's okay. when Kevin turns his sound on. All right, everybody, head over to Facebook. If you want to catch this live, um, you'll get the Zoom link. You can join us there. Otherwise, we'll be recording this and you can listen to us talking about all things because it's a great story how we got involved. So head over to Frequency Specific on Facebook. You can join the live and get the links to join us on the Zoom. See you in a bit. All right. So I'm going to just cut that off here. Perfect. That's helpful. Okay. Let's focus on this one now. We'll get all the bugs worked out. So how did you get started with FSM? I love this story. Because I hated it so much and I didn't want to believe in it. I know. That was the best part. Skeptics are the best. <laughs> they are. And now that I'm teaching it, well, although I find that less people come to the free or come to the courses and the seminars, skeptics, like I feel like everybody's ready to learn. But so I feel like fate the universe gave me FSM so many times and I was just like, no, no, no. Um, so we were, I mean, the main thing how I got um, interested in it for lack of a better term was we were working, there's a bunch of us doing um, like a summertime hockey kind of training group and um, a couple of chiropractors and doctors and I were working with a couple of these athletes and um, there was a custom care that was being um, poking its head out of somebody's gym bag. And I was like, oh God, it's a machine. And it, I grew up and I, in my college, the basis of everything that I do professionally is with my hands, right? So that's what good manual therapists do is we, we heal and we fix and we treat with our hands and machines are just poo pooed. Yeah. Right. I don't want to be stuck in a room with some machine. I want to treat people with my hands. So, um, a very well-known sports chiropractor and I were working with somebody. I'm like, can you believe this guy uses, uses this? And he's like, Oh, you don't know what that is. I'm like, of course I know what that is. What a joke. He's like, no, you got to watch this. So we're treating this hockey player neck and he's talking and he's alert. And, you know, we're doing that. And all of a sudden he changes something, turns something on. And he just kind of like dozes off and all the other hockey players like, Oh my God, did he have a stroke, dude? What happened? What's wrong with this guy? And I was like, what, 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 what is going on here? How did that just happen? And treating his trap and his rotator cuff and everything that I knew went out the window in about 4.2 seconds because I saw and felt smush. And I had zero training in FSM. So I didn't know what the heck was going on. Like, did I need to call a priest? Was there like an exorcism? Like <laughs> what happened? Because that's not normal. So I feel like my introduction was very profound. And so when we have people who don't know what smush is, I have to take a step back and go, oh yeah, like not everybody entered the world <laughs> of microcurrent and FSM the way I did with Insta Smush. So I didn't need a study or a paper or a document to tell me how it worked. I went home, Googled you, Googled this and got the, I think it was DVD. That was the first thing I could get my hands on was like the whatever online disc oh, and drive training. Um, read it, became obsessed with that, got to the first live seminar was I think in Austin because I was in Switzerland at the time too. So we were in Canada and then we went to Switzerland. And so I had babies. And so I would learn this when they were napping. And so that would be my thing was, okay, it was, I'd get my, I still do coffee with Carol. I'd grab my cup of coffee and I'd put on my thumb drive and I'm like, what? 
is this? So for the first year was just me working with hockey players, trying to replicate smush and a custom care. And I think that was a good way of learning because I didn't have to worry about frequencies. I could just put on something benign like MFTP or soft tissue acute or something and let it run and just focus on what I was feeling. And then I'd get smush and then I'd be like, what was that? <laughs> Pick up the custom care. What was running? I'd write it down and then I'd look it up later. Okay, well, that's what created. So, and then, and then I do what I normally do is when I get interested in something, I stock the crap out of them. And I started coming to every single core class I could. Yeah. And that's, I think that's probably the best way to learn it because you're a person that learned to believe your hands. Yes. It, what the disadvantage that the evidence-based people have is that they have to get it in their head before they believe it. Right. And it's like with this, it's easier to believe once you see it. Right. Right. Yeah. And for me, it was the same thing because I had this list and the list said, this frequency stops bleeding. And it's like, whatever. And then I, <laughs> I was working on somebody with my thumbs. I should have trigger point in her gastroc. She's a runner. And I'm good with my thumbs. I, you know, travel training, blah, blah, blah. So I'm doing ischemic compression and her pain went from a three to a seven. So my response was to call George because he was one of my teachers. And George said, put 18 Hertz on channel A and 62 Hertz on channel B. And I said, what's that? And he said, well, I'll tell you if it works. So he told me how to set it up. I hung up, I set it up, ran the machine, two minutes, three minutes, her pain was a zero. Four minutes, just in case, took the sticky pads off. Pain was a zero, the trigger point was gone. I called George back and I said, what did I just do? And he said, well, it's a, it's a frequency to stop bleeding from the list. What list? Well, Harry's list. What list from Harry? Oh, well, he got these frequencies from this. He bought a practice in 46 that came with a machine that was made in 1922. And um, I worked with him in 1983 and I brought the list home. Really? So we started working on patients together I was using my hands and he was doing his thing, looking down the list, looking at the patient and deciding what, telling me what frequencies to run. So I learned by having my hands on the patient and once again, it would soften and it's like, oh, that's different. What's that, right? And then there was the, the what was he? It was a dock worker, he was a crane operator at the docks. And he had trigger points in his SCM that I'd been working on with my thumbs, my well-trained thumbs. Been working on them for two months, not much progress. He was about to lose his job. And because trigger points in the SCM, when you flex your head forward and turn it, you activate the SCM, makes you dizzy. Right. Well, at night, when you're lying in bed and trying to roll over, it doesn't make a big difference. But when you've got a 20,000 pound train car on the end of a steel cable, getting dizzy is bad. Right. So we had the frequencies. I never did get, I didn't get the whole list from George. We had them written on the back of a business card. And there's a, there's a picture of the business card in the resonance effect. Right. So I got the business card and it was next to the machine. And then across the hall was the microcurrent machine that we were using for facials. So I, and it had graphite gloves. It's like hands. I want to use my hands and gloves. So right. I put the gloves on my hands. The leads fit into the gloves, two positive, two negative. That made sense to me. Mm -hmm. I started using the frequencies from the back of the business card. And this neck was like, a tree trunk and it was hard and it was like your experience i'm sitting there and i run the frequencies for mineral deposits in the muscle belly and the the muscles just went smush they just turned to pudding muscles don't do that no I, and that was the beginning it's like you what is it you can't throw out the data because it doesn't match your model right 
there's there's no thing in medicine that does what that does so no it's pretty cool no and when you you have no choice you can't unsee it you can't unfeel it and well you can if you're a really stubborn obnoxious you know I guess. but we're I guess. not so okay no. no do you know what i have to tell you there's a new thing there's a thing do you know there is a, a thing such as internal shingles that never make a blister what that's a good face because this guy this this guy this patient that i've been seeing for 25 years comes in six weeks ago dr mom i'm, I'm dr mom i got uh -huh. this pain right here and he's right on his right side right from the center he never goes around the back it's not the classic ribbon that you get with shingles it's right, right here and he's lost 25 pounds oh boy okay fine so we went down the rabbit hole i drew blood amylase lipase does he have pancreatic cancer we got a ct of his abdomen we did an ultrasound of his gallbladder and and it wasn't that it's like okay now we know six really bad things it's not Right. What on earth is it? So Jody Adams, one of our faculty, she's one of the other physical medicine faculty. Yeah. Jody and I are on the phone because she's working with him too. And she said, did you know there was a thing called internal shingles? There is, there is not, is not internal shingle. No. I, then I, Dr. Google gets in my internal shingles. Wow. So I finally treated it as post-herpetic neuralgia. Yeah. No blisters. But of all, he's seen six physicians. Jody and I are the only two that ever did a sensory exam. Shut up. They don't touch people. It's like, ew, bodies. No. Yeah. Anyway, so completely hypersensitive and numb. So he's already denervated. Pain is worse at night. He hasn't slept in eight weeks. And it's T6 to T9. And we've I treated him neck to feet for 40 and 10 and 40 and 89 for the central sensitization and the cord sensitization. And then we treated from the spine to the front with three machines, one on 40 and 89. Yeah. One on the virus, 160 and yeah. 396. Sorry, 40 and 396. 160 malignant virus in 396 and before that i did the shingles frequencies yeah and then the other one was increased secretions in the nerve mm. so reduce inflammation increase secretions treat the virus and take care of the central stuff and i sent a note to for him to take to his wife for his wife to take to his gp to get him some gabapentin so he could sleep wow and then I said, okay, you are to take 300 of these one hour before you're supposed to go to bed and go to bed early. No going yeah. to bed at one o'clock. Yeah. When you wake up three hours later, you're supposed to take another three. Yeah. And then three hours at, after that, you can take two or three and you are going to sleep 12 hours. And when you wake up, you're going to be groggy and I don't care. Yeah. You're supposed to sleep. Yeah. But internal shingles, who ever heard of that? Not me. Okay. That's why the pinwheel is your friend. Right. That, that's my story for the week. I, I love that. <laughs> that's crazy. So now when I, when I get these little stories and you know what happens, right? You start going back through all your patient files in your head going, okay, you need to come in because now I have to try something else. Yeah. So, um, geez, that's interesting. I have a question that just popped up here for Kim and Carol. So this is kind of neat that we're getting little questions popping up. I want to answer this one because I think it might lead us down something. If you only had five frequencies, mm. what are your favorite ones to run? You first. <laughs> okay. On channel A or channel B? So, so for me, I mean, like my practice used to be strictly sports used to be yeah when life was easy <laughs> sorry <laughs> so i think i think 40 okay we're gonna go to my favorite eight channels first i think 40 
gets a bad rep because people are afraid of it. And I see that sometimes like on the message boards or I get these questions when I teach a sports course and 40 is like used for two days straight pretty much in the sports course because we need it. It's just, it's the basement membrane of all things healing in my opinion and acute injury. So 40 for sure. And no, we don't have to be afraid of it because it's the coolest diagnostic frequency that we have. Absolutely. So I think you just have to be aware that some frequencies are more profound than others. And I like the profound ones. Like, it's just like, yes, we've got change. We're doing something. So this is a funny joke. What's a four letter word that starts with S? A bad four letter word starting with S in a therapist's world. Stop. Same. Oh, same. And it's true, right? I would rather make somebody 10 times worse then hear them come back and say, eh, I didn't do anything. Like, ugh. like that is like the worst thing you can say to me is that there was no change. So My goal on the first visit, I tell all these crazy difficult patients that come in, my goal, the first visit is to not make you worse. Right. If we get through the first visit and I don't make you worse, that's a win. Right. And it modifies their expectations because they come in after everything they've seen on YouTube they come right. in expecting this magic wand and, you know, miracles. And it's like, no, our goal today is to not make you worse and to figure out what's really going on. Right. So, okay. After 40, then what? 81 would yeah. be the one that yeah. um, follows it again, nothing to be afraid of. Um, magic. Totally magic. Um, right after 81 increase in secretions, I'd probably go with 124. Yep. Torn and broken is again in the athletic community in chronic pain. Something is always torn and broken. Totally. Number four. 13, I guess would be my fourth. They're hard. After my top three, then there's like seven of them that are like, right around number four, number five. So 13 scoring, I get the most um, bang for my buck using 13 out of all the frequencies that we have for something that's hard or stuck or sticky or glued or something. I always, almost always start with 13 yep. and I'll go off of that quickly. And then number five, what would you be what would your number five be You're treating athletes it's got to be 91 they calcify yeah. in their spare time or they're or they're not athletes yeah okay. yeah i do like I, 13 and 91 are almost like like two stepsisters right they're yeah. almost i'm always like flip-flopping between the two of them right away so yeah i would agree i would agree with that one and what's your other one that you were thinking about saying but didn't get to because i opened up well no like 91 51 like that's another like I, I use those three together sometimes it's weird there's certain patients that are 51 patients and 13 doesn't work okay. with them yeah I have one person who I just saw last week and she's coming in next week she is 51 nothing works to loosen anything but 51 amazing it is amazing the only people I use 51 on are kids really yep yeah at, the, at this point in adults, it's 13 all the time. So what are your favorite tissues? That's harder. It I mean, is way harder. Organs. I mean, yeah. let's assume the organs are, if it's not an organ. Right. So fascia, 142. Mm -hmm. All things are connected through, through that. Um, 77 is my close backup. Again, this is just like straight up easy stuff. So it's fascia or it's connective tissue. Those are good to start. That would be followed by 62, obviously with muscle belly, but it's never the muscle, but that's a whole other podcast. That should be just a time. Are you froze? Webinar just in itself because yeah. it's in the muscle. But some, with athletes, sometimes we have to be mindful and acknowledge it. Well, and then you get in you know 30 mile an hour collisions every day yeah i i find that so this is my relationship with 62 
I remember when I was in college, I mean, I was trained by just the most amazing people. So we're talking about adductors and I did my thesis on pelvic instabilities. So, so when we were treating the adductor, we we're talking about the gracilis and our instructors like the gracilis will never cause an injury. It will never cause a dysfunction, but it will hold it there. So that's kind of how I feel about 62. It's never, it's never caused anything, but it will hold and prevent something from truly healing. So that's how I look at it like that. So after fascia, connective tissue, muscle belly, you know, dura, cord, disc, like they're all nerve, nerve, of course. Oh my God. Duh. Nerve brain parts. I mean, how do you, how do you choose? Um, yeah, nerve got to go up to number one. What am I talking about? Thank fascia? You. So okay. fascia, like number two, so nerve, fascia, blah, 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 the rest of it. Because, um, well, fascia is enervated, right? Yes. Yes. And for me, it's, it's never the fascia, John Sharkey, you know, may he strike me dead. It's never the fascia, fascia is enervated. Yeah. So uh, the, our, our channel A's are all the same. Yeah. Information number one. It is, it is the best way, the only way to find an occult infection. Yep. So don't be afraid of it. You got to right. embrace that reaction, that side effect. You have to love it. Yes. So 40 for sure. Yeah. Um, 13, 91, 124 saved my life more times. Yeah. And then, like you said, 13 and 91 go together. Yeah. But the other one that has proven because of the patients I get, 160 oh yeah malignant virus from the advanced right mold sometimes but 160 for malignant virus for all those the weird things that you don't know where they came from right right and um the the tissues are would be 396 yeah um once again strike me dead i hardly ever use fascia anymore yeah because nerve drives fascia. Yeah. And the 396, the nerve, 10, the cord. Yeah. And afraid to move it is 89, 40 yeah. and 89. Yeah. That one neck to feet. Yeah. It's not just afraid to move it. It's if the, and I found out, you know, all the time I've been saying the thalamus is that place where pain comes from. Mm -hmm. I lied. It's actually, I had to do an article this week for Townsend Letter, and it's the insula, which is right next to the thalamus. The thalamus is just a switching center, and the thalamus sends messages to the insula. The insula does pain amplification or pain suppression. Right. So when somebody's afraid to move it, it's, you, you almost can't treat a chronic patient without treating the midbrain and the cord. And as you're going to hear from Jay Shaw, we just got his um, lecture plan for the advanced in February. And that's like so exciting. Cool. So nerve cord, 89, the midbrain, then connective tissue and fascia are right next to each other. Yeah. And then the arteries 62 is enervated. Yeah. So it's a pain generator. And then there's the whole three and 97 thing. Yes. That's the whole separate love affair. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a patient that came in with rock hard QLs and it, it torqued her pelvis. And she said, everybody sells my pelvis is torqued. And I went, when did you have a kidney infection? Oh, last year. Do you still have a kidney infection? Well, they say I don't. And you look at where the hardness is and you run 61 and 23 infection in the kidney and the muscle goes smush yeah and then you take scarring out of the ureter and her qls get even and her pelvic her pelvic what did she call it you know with pelvis is always rotated and so it's my hip flexors no it's not it's your yeah. ureter right so how do you separate those but yeah my favorites yeah those are 
there's so many, it's hard to pick like five. Why would I ever pick five? That's a terrible question. Thanks for writing that in. <laughs> but it, it works for physical medicine. It as does. Long as they're easy. Like 124 and 77. Have you yeah. ever read a rotator cuff that you couldn't fix in three days? No. It, just like, duh. But right. you also have to do 13 and 396. So if yeah. you get all those combinations together, it's like, well, that makes it easy. Did you right. get any more question? Yeah, what? Uh, so Minette asks, if someone has a PEG tube or a gastrojunsto, that, that word. G tube. Yeah, that. And <laughs> use scar frequencies for, for vagus, spinal, and nerve, can you still use it? OK, so if somebody has a G tube, which is they have something wrong with swallowing, yeah. So they have to have a tube feeding into their stomach. Yeah. Um, I had a patient a couple of months ago, two one week stents at a time. She had a G tube that some gastroenterologist decided that her um, duodenum one wasn't working. So he gave her a J tube. The difference is you can do a feeding in six hours with it. G tube because the stomach will expand and you can put more in it, then it leaks out the duodenum and it's fine. A J tube goes into the small intestine, the upper part of the small intestine, and it takes 18 hours. She spends 18 hours eating food that's been put through a Vitamix poured into this tube, and it has to be completely liquid with no little bits because it gets stuck and clogs it. So she can't, she can't swallow. There's an obstruction in her esophagus. Right. And so one of the things I did the first week she was there, Manette, was to treat the vagus for scarring, treat her neck for scarring. Um, she had a chemical accident where she swallowed drain cleaner. It, she thought it was something else. She took a big gulp and that took oh. care of it. Yes, that's a good face. And um, so we treated the vagus in her neck all throughout her abdomen, scarring in the abdomen. Right. The J tube is not, is, it's stitched in and they just change the balloon or the G tube too. They just change the balloon and it's stitched in. Taking out the scar tissue isn't, was not a problem. This is an N of one, but yeah, scarring in the vagus helped. It was really weird is when we treated the, uh, the vagus in her neck, the depression got better. She could taste things again. Wow. She had sensation in her pharynx. Wow. She, um, yeah, it was pretty amazing. So they're difficult patients to treat, but I think that's why we've switched to teaching people how to think. Yeah, because it's definitely not a recipe a one size fits all slam dunk. It's how to critically think on your feet, you know, and um, take it apart, take it apart, put it back together. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of that's, that's always my goal, right? When somebody comes in is, and this is what I've really been emphasizing too, with like the sports course and you know, I think with pain and injury, it's like everyone, every seminar, every webinar, every whatever, once a week I get, well, what do you start with? Like, where do I start? Right. And there is there's a lot, it can be super overwhelming because we, we do have a lot of tools at our fingertips, but I always just say like, simplify it. Like what, again, like, what is your, why, like, what's your intent? Why are they there to see you? I'm sure we could summarize like most of our people, except for my professional athletes, that pain doesn't register. They're coming to see you because they have pain. So start there, start, get them out of pain and you can treat all the other stuff. But if like, I don't know how many people are going to keep coming to see you twice a week for like all these weeks or days, if your the pain scale doesn't change. Right. And that's, that's, and that's also your marker, right? Because you will make them worse. And so when somebody comes in to see me and they say like, what's your pain? It's a three out of 10. Okay. And then their shoulder goes from here to here. And then the next day, they're like, my pain is worse. And it's like, yeah, but when you left, your pain was a zero. So what happened? Well, that's why it's, that's why I end up with 
two custom cares and four precision cares and an auto care in one room. So yes. the first, if somebody comes in in pain and I go to like the thing I have to work on is nerve adhesions in, um, in the adductors. So they come yeah. in with hamstring injuries. So you know it's adhesions in the adductors. Yeah. So before you even touch where the nerves are adhered, I start with 40 and 10. Yeah. That's where you start because right. anybody with pain in the periphery, the spinal cord is sensitized within a week. Right. So 40 and 10 is not just for fibromyalgia. 40 and 10 is so that the muscles will relax so you can touch them. Right. And then you touch them and it's never the adductor. No. Nope. It's never the pectineus. No. It's always 13 and 396. Yeah. So it's always adhesions in the nerves. So you treat that. And if you do 40 and I see you watching your watch and one of us has to, I've got my hand <laughs> over here. Too. So I have an alarm set. There's, <laughs> there's, so you take the adhesions out of the nerve and that would normally be exquisitely tender, but right. 40 and 10 keeps the pain down, right. keeps the sensitization down and literally decreases the pain messages that are allowed to go up the spinal cord. Right. So, you, but if you get to the quadriceps and the adductors and they're like rocks, um, unless it's a lineman, they shouldn't be even in those guys they shouldn't be rocks they should be well toned but they shouldn't be rocks and that's the difference right like between healthy tone versus tone. tonic yeah so then you've got 40 and 10 on one machine and you put 81 and 10 on another machine to soften the muscles so you can actually feel what's going on yeah so i'll run 40 and 10 to quiet the sensitization 81 and 10 to increase descending inhibition so I can actually work on the legs. Right. And then you run 13 and 396. Right. Right. And you yep. work on the shoulder and you, you know for sure there's a partial thickness rotator cuff tear. So you have one machine at 124 and 77 and the other machine at 40 and 396 stuffed in their armpit. And you do 13 and 396 because there's no point in fixing the partial thickness tear until you get rid of the subscapularis adhesions. Right. So you do, people say, well, how do you see somebody in 30 minutes? Use four machines to get four visits worth of stuff done in 30 minutes. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's exactly right. Whether something is, like you said, if you're going back to the shoulder, no one's going to move their shoulder if, if that nerve is stuck. Like it's just doesn't matter how good your hands are. Um, a the muscles will not let you in that deep because they're gonna guard. And and B, that's like hello, like your body is not going to traction a nerve that's glued. So and the other thing you found, I mean, you do this more than I do. For me, it's just like it's so cool. You do the subscap and they get their arm up and they say, Yeah, but it still feels tight. And they do this and it's yeah. like, yeah, that's the long thoracic nerve and the lats and the serratus lay down and yeah. then you just peel them apart and yeah. oh, oh, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite is when you have them sitting up again and you do your upper extremity test and they're just like, and they stop where they used to stop. I'm like, no, keep going. They're just like. <laughs> Yeah. The look. That's the look. Because they're afraid to move it. And that's where 40 and 89 has been huge. So anybody who's listening now is taking the sports course. That's the reason why we start with when we're doing this whole wipe and load and reboot and neural repatterning, you have to run it because that is an integral part of restoring range of motion is ridding the fear or the apprehension or even just the old patterning maybe they're not even afraid to move it because some of the athletes can't wait to move it but it's a part of that resetting so the compensatory muscles can go back to doing their original job the primary muscles can reboot once again so it's and that's why god invented 81 and 84 and that's why that's so 1489 <laughs> is wipe 
81 and 84 is the load. And, and so and when so I'm working, I'm sure it's that's increased secretions in the cerebellum. Right. Because the cerebellum knows what muscles are supposed to fire in what order to make the shoulder move. Right. Correctly. And so the patient lifts their arm up. And in athletes, it's not a problem because they know that they have a lower trapezius and they should use it. Right. But you take an untrained civilian with just bad mechanics for right. 15 years. Yeah. She has a so short, so sore shoulder. Yes. And getting her to find her lower trap. Yes. So the lower trap is not your rhomboids. No. And that's exactly what happens. The, and even upper traps are like, like this, and it's known you physically have to put your hands on their back and say, come into my hands and, and I, pinch. I and pinch. I use a Pilates wheel now because they can drive the bus and then they can retract lower into it. I'll show it to you one of these days. I'll bring it, bring it to our next podcast, maybe. Have fun. But that's why I've been, so when we do this in my clinic with 40 and 89 and 81 and 84, so when I get somebody to retest after I treat them and I run 40 and 89, I will never correct a mechanic. I let them do it organically on their own. And then when we hit 81, that's when I give the corrections and say, okay, over here, load this way. No, I need these, tra need this part to fire. So, and it's so cool. It only takes like one repetition. And I know with my old background as a trainer, there's no way they're going to get that after rep two, like maybe after rep 83 or 84, but not after two. So those would, that's why those are my favorite too. I, it's like the whole process of, for physical medicine. The whole process is so magic. It just makes everything easier. Yeah. Yeah. Turn on your chat. Hold on. Okay. We're turning on the chat. We've got some more questions. Oh, goody. I can see it. There we go. Uh, that was a long one, so I didn't want to read it all. <laughs> oh, would love, Mara Tomaski, would love to hear more about the insula. Well, what I know about the insula is that it's this little pink circle next to the thalamus. It's, I went off the diagram that we used in the, core the new the, or maybe it's the neurovisceral where it's like why you scratch when you're itch right and so there's a special nerve that just responds to histamine and inflammation and mm -hmm. but between the time you feel the itch and the time you actually scratch it especially if it's in your nose right so the signal goes up that nerve up your arm or from your nose up right through the facial nerve and it goes to the spinal cord to the medulla to the thalamus and there's a little side branch that says to the cerebellum hey there's this thing that's going on with the nose so they might want to scratch it so you might want to just think about that for a minute then it goes to the insula and the insula decides decides is in quotes mm -hmm. how much does it hurt and can i suppress it Right. right. It also assesses threat. Like if a bug bites you and it really, really hurts, you're going to, you're going to smack it without thinking at all. Right. You have just a little issue on your nose and you're lecturing to a group of, you know, 30 or 500 people, or you're on MSNBC and there are a million people watching you. It goes from the insula to the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex is the one that decides how serious is this? Now, the insula has already decided if it's a threat. If right. it's a threat, nobody else gets to vote. The, it goes right from the insula to the sensory cortex that says, hey, it's in your nose, right? And then the somatosensory two cortex, which is just behind that localizes it really well. It says, yeah, right there not here on your nose, not there, but right there on your nose. Then it comes back down from somatosensory. It goes to the basal ganglia so you don't have an intention tremor where you miss your nose. And then it goes to the cerebellum that coordinates all the muscles that make you do this. Right. Right? right. And that's, that's the 
that's the loop. And that happens all in that much time. So the prefrontal cortex gets to vote about, do I scratch now? And then the insula says, okay, I can suppress the itch. That's my job, because itch and pain are kind of on a continuum. And then there's another part that's near the prefrontal cortex that decides just how good it's going to feel to itch it. You right. Know, with sometimes when it just feels so good. Yeah. There's a pleasure center in the in the cortex that does that. Right, right. And that's in the Townsend letter. It'll be, I think, in November issue. Very so cool. I I had no idea because I've always called it the thalamus. In our world, it's all 89. Yeah. So there's that. Right. So, and yes, all right. Yes, insula is integrative. Kevin, the last time it was not listed. Uh, trying to figure out how to use 81 with somebody who has 7% autoimmune antibodies to acetylcholine. Hmm. You're reading a question out. Okay, I'll read it out loud. That means I have to put my glasses on. Um, so this, this is for those that are listening. Yeah, this is for Jane Nelson. I've been trying to figure out how to use 81 with someone who has 7% autoimmune antibodies to acetylcholine. Hmm. Hmm. How did they decide it's 7% antibodies? I was going to say, you, that's... How do you get the person? Anyway, that's we cool. used 81 to counteract the TIA to restore circulation to the brain while 81 and 90, I'm assuming what you used, but it increased the acetylcholine because she started having spasms in her arms and hands after only a few minutes. So here's the challenge with acetylcholine. They use acetylcholine in the cortex primary for knowing things and memory things, but it also works in the sensory and motor cortex. Mm -hmm. so you'd wanna do 81 and 90, and obviously the spasms in the hands are 81 and or 80, 81 and 10 to stop the spasms because 81 and 10 apparently increases GABA, which quiets the spasm. And then the other thing you can do is 40 and 92. Right. So quiet the sensory and motor cortex. Right. So this is it's so obviously when the spasms start, you stop 81 and 10 and or 80 sorry you stop 81 and 90. I think she just that, wrote that she used 29 to stop the spasms. Spa 29 and musk and musk um, skeletal muscles doesn't work. I oh, thank you I have tried that and I have work. never had any use for it. Never works it works on smooth muscle. You okay. can stop um, biliary colic you can stop um, spasms in the gut. You can, it's great with asthma. Okay. So you have to do tw 29 and asthma. Doesn't work for okay. skeletal muscle at all. I've, I've seen so, people talk about it and I've tried it, but I have never had any luck with it myself. So. And I talk about it when we, it's only covered in the visceral section because right. it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay. after a few minutes, work with her remotely. That's a whole nother webinar. <laughs> LMT. Uh, but the person, person in question is a client of mine referred to me by so many who have you found that people are finding you from the website? We get how many hits a year, Kevin? A lot. <laughs> I can't remember the number. Yeah. I, I think it's like a million and a half. Something. It's it's like huge, right? Zoom so we can document what's going on. Smush, change frequencies as needed. How do you increase only specific sections and not trigger acetylcholine secretions? Well, now that you know what to expect, you would do, yeah, you did eighty-one and ninety, and then now she says twenty-nine worked really fast. That's interesting. Um, now that you know what's going to ha happen, do just 81 and 90 to help with the cortex. 
Makes but sense. 40 and 92 to quiet the motor cortex. Yeah. And then 81 and 10 to increase descending GABA. That's right. been the biggest learning experience in the last five years. Right. Use it in cerebral palsy. Right. And that lasts for two weeks. Wow. 81 and 10. Right. Who would have thought? Yeah, that's incredible. But it makes sense though, right? When you work it out and say it out loud. Well, and then I've got this autoimmune thing where the antibodies get in between the nerves that secrete GABA right. to, re, to keep the tone normal. Right. So my spinal cord and my brain are fine, but I've got yeah. antibodies peripherally. And the thing that makes the muscles softer besides baclofen is right. 81 and 10. Even when I'm taking baclofen to reduce the spasticity, 81 and 10 still works right. on top of the baclofen. So right. who knew? Well, this is, we're learning every day, right? Like I love your learning curve picture. My roller coaster. The roller coaster. Hey, I got this. Uh, no, I don't. Just and then, kidding. yeah, I do. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, whoops. It's just, it is. It's I know. Fun. We go through waves, don't we? Of I know sometimes my family, when I come home from work, they're just like, how is your day? Because sometimes it's like, you should see the miracles. And then some days I'm like, I suck. Everything's so hard and bad. <laughs> And I give up and I want to go be a pet groomer. <laughs> right? Like it's just, oh. um, and that's what I love about the advance and talking to you. And it's like, you don't have to have it all figured out in a weekend. And those of you who think that you do are in for one because um, the universe gives you these people and I think that's the greatest um, gift that we're giving people with the new way of teaching the course is ways to troubleshoot it. So when your initial recipe fails, you've got 362,000 other combinations that you get to try the next time. Well, it teaches you to think about it in a different way. Right. And when you put the pieces together, I think the thing that's the most miraculous for what we do as as a as a group there's there's now 4000 fsm practitioners in 23 countries that's amazing that's just amazing wow and of all the um of all the th the things that we have to offer them relief of pain is the least honestly right, right. because we as a prof as a profession as a technique group we're the only ones that are trained to look at the system as a whole thing right so the vagus so mara was saying um the client's problem <laughs> right uh, no wait the client's problems are apparently related to the vagus <laughs> okay fine um <laughs> yeah 81 and 109 is your friend there's yeah. there is no circumstance under 80 under which 81 and 109 um don't work right um so it's it is magic it's there's one of the fs fsm in quotes one of the chinese made fsm machines on the market right. and one of my patients bought one he said, well, it's $500 less. And then I looked at the, the protocol it has on it for the Vegas yeah. and his summaries sheet. Are you ready? Are you sitting no. down? Oh, and I don't want to hear it. The summary sheet says that this protocol is good for relaxing upper trapezius muscle tone. Oh. Close your mouth. Um, mm -hmm. And and the protocol starts with 40 and 109. La, 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 la. I'm really sorry. It's 
I feel like I need to run concussion on myself right now after hearing that. Tell me about it. And then wow. I, I switched him. I swapped. I will give you a custom care and swap you for your device because wow. you should be using this thing. Yeah. Protocols are 10 years out of date. Don't do that. Right. And he swapped it back because he liked it. He liked the fact that it had a backlight. And I went, okay, fine. Oh boy. Well, and that's the other learning is you have to let them, you and the patient form a team. And if the patient's not on your team, they need to go be on the team they want to be on. I don't right. get to it. It's the end of codependence as we know it. Right. You know? So amazing. Well, we've gone over our intended, um, but we knew that was going to happen. Imagine my surprise. It's a good thing we aimed at 30 minutes because we knew we were going to end up at 60. Right. See, <laughs> we are getting better and better at doing these chats. Well, considering and, it's our first one, there's no place to go but up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love it when we're trying to come up with a plan and it was just like, we end up going on these riffs anyways. So. Um, I think it's more organic when we just kind of, I think we should try to pick a topic. So I'm going to take the liberty of telling people if there's a certain topic that you want to hear Dr. Carol and Kim talk about to put it in Facebook or bug us on social media, and then we can kind of get some ideas together and we can formulate yes. some, we can come up with some plans. As, as long as you're prepared for the fact that once we pick a topic, we're going to go off of it. There, yeah, there's no <laughs> chance you're going to stay on it for the whole time. That, that, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's just the way things happen with us. But I think, I think, I don't know, I think it's fun. I know you and I love talking about it, but. Yeah. Well, and our, and our panelists are having a good time. Well, that's good. This now is, I have yeah. a patient who's, who's watching this and she said, wait, my physical therapist only uses two machines and you guys are using four. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you can just need two. sometimes. In what no. world? Uh, sometimes in my world, I can get away with two machines. Can you? Yes. Lucky. For okay. straight up, easy. Straight up, easy. I'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we're opening the FSM clinic and training center. So pretty soon that website is going to go live and there's going to be a live feed of the construction photographs as it moves forward. I love that. And I have to buy tables and hope they get here by January, that fourth, because that's when we're supposed to open. So if we get treated on massage tables, oh well. Right. There's a, a, tr a room for the residents. We have room for three residents and Kevin. Right. And, um, and then I'm in the process of starting to buy machines. Well, in my office right now, my little office in Portland, I've got three precision cares, an auto care, and one custom care. And the custom care, I reprogram just about every time a patient comes in to do what I need it to do. Right. So can you imagine what it's going to be like outfitting four treatment rooms and a gym? <laughs> By the way, I'm going to have a gym. I know. You told me. And you know you'll never get rid of me if that I happens. Know. And when that I have happens. a spare bedroom with a really brand new mattress and walnut. For you. It's, I'm just yeah. saying. It, yeah. I <laughs> There's I'm no just best, saying. no best Western for you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What would be the best second best machine if I have a precision care, a custom care? Hundred percent. You can reprogram it as you go along. So I, I just keep the custom care software open on the desk, mm -hmm. and if I need a machine that just is going to run forty and ten or forty and eighty nine. You yeah. don't have to waste a precision care on that. So you can have three custom cares and a precision care. Right. That's what I exactly what I do. I've actually added some of those just kind of one liners into the mode bank. So if I just need a 40 and 10, I just and I have one that I just label as clinic use. So it's got like 40 and 10, 40, 396, 124 and something. Yeah. And then you're right, you don't want to waste a precision care. And yeah. So I've got clinics 
clinical custom care. Yes. And it's got mostly one-liners on it. Yes. I love the one-liners when you need them. Well, and then there are patients where you just, you have to run just concussion in Vegas in the background and in the background. Right. right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then. I love that face. face. No, this one's, this one's late. The patient that accidentally, not her fault, swallowed the drain cleaner. Yes. Right. She feels guilty because she should have known when it hit her mouth. She should never have swallowed it. Oh. Right? So she feels guilty. And I went, and we've, for years, we've been looking for a frequency for guilt. Right. And I said, it's not guilt. You're angry at yourself. Mm. Think about guilt. Right. You're either angry at somebody else for telling you that what you did was wrong. Right. You're angry at yourself for doing something stupid that caused a problem. Right, right. So right. that was the first time in 20 years I've rethought the concept of guilt. Hmm. It's not guilt. I treated her for anger and she fell asleep for 20 minutes. That's interesting. I've used a concept with that with um, a lot of my motor vehicle accidents that had um, concussion, right? So they, they've felt terrible for years. They come to see me, they feel better, brain fog is gone. And then they come in with what was either guilt or anger or something. And like, why are you so upset? Is you're feeling better? And it's like, I lost three years of my life feeling like, you know, and so sometimes that emotional component comes in after you're just when you think you're done treating there's a whole other layer to that lasagna well they they go from fear that they're that they'll never recover right and they go from there to um grief right but the grief is is always layered so right. you grief resentment Right. Resentment more than anger, grief, resentment, anger. And then the fear is behind it all, but grief is always a layer, but that's the, it's, it's grief at what I've lost. I lost seven years of my life. And I mean, that's a whole nother podcast because we're now, it's now five o'clock. Yes. So the, but they've lost five, seven, 12 years of their life. And that's the point at which I say, straight up looking them in the eye. No, you didn't. Excuse me. What did you learn? Right. You learned something in the last 12 years that you could not have learned any other way. Very good. Yeah. Sorry, it was so painful. Right. It was inconvenient. Hmm. It's inconvenient. I'm sorry it was painful. I'm sorry it was inconvenient. But what did you learn? Right. Does the world actually come to an end if you don't make your bed? Does the world actually come to an end if you don't take out the trash and cook dinner? Right. You learn compassion. You're never going to look at anybody in a wheelchair or with a cane the same way. Right. You're kinder. Right now you're angry and you can go beat up on pillows if you want. But to to help them make that transition, um, it's important that you, there's a great line going around these days. It's important that you know that for sure that you are more than the bad things that happen to you. I love that. Yes, I've heard that. Yeah. Isn't that, that is so good. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one to leave on since it's five o'clock. I think so too. What do you well, think? I love this. I had fun. I hope everybody else had fun listening to us as much as we had fun talking. Yeah. It looks like they did from the messages. Yeah. You see Paula. Oh, Paula Lake from Australia. Wow. Oh, down. Oh, you poor baby. I can't ever get to Oz again until all those viruses are gone. So Marissa, yes. It's so nice. Oh, I love these names. It's like, oh, yay. It's like our friends. Yes. It's the yeah. fam. I love it. So yes, let's end on this very profound, good, happy note. And 
We are electronic wizards. I do. I love that. <laughs> oh, I love being a wizard. Kevin's okay. electronic wizard. Kim is next. I'm something of a troglodyte, but I'm learning. <laughs> we are all learning. This is an awesome journey that we're on. So let's let's keep all those questions coming and we'll come up with some themes and keep going on our tangents as much as we want. And every Wednesday, four o'clock. Wednesday at four, everybody, we will be here. We hope you will join us and we'll get Instagram live and Facebook live all succinct too. And we'll figure it out. Ivor, welcome back. (laughs) (laughs) Saying hi to our friends. Everybody. Okay. I'll see you next week. If not next Wednesday at four, I will be here tomorrow. Are you ready for this? Tomorrow. I'm going to be 75 tomorrow. (sighs) I knew that. Yeah. What are you going to do? Honestly, I'm taking my staff to lunch and then we're going to Edgefield and Edgefield has a soak pool, but it's not like a round pool. It's like a lazy river without the river. I mean, without the current Uh It's soaking river thing in a garden with, yeah, it's a religious experience. Yes. So I think if we can schedule it far enough ahead, the rooms are like 200, $250. There's a bath down the hall kind of thing. Yes. But maybe we can do the Portland um, uh, practicum course there in that April. We just set the practicum schedule for next year. Right. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can do Edgefield, just because everybody should go in the soap pool. Yeah. 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 Well, enjoy your soap tomorrow. Everybody you. wish wishes you a happy birthday already. I see that coming in. So have a wonderful day tomorrow. You too. Everybody. And we'll see you next week, next Wednesday at 4. I'm so excited. We get to do this every week. Yes. Yes. Bye. Bye. The Frequency Specific Microcurrent Podcast has been produced by Frequency Specific Seminars for entertainment, educational, and information purposes only. The information and opinion provided in the podcast are not medical advice, do not create any type of doctor-patient relationship, and unless expressly stated, do not reflect the opinions of its affiliates, subsidiaries, or sponsors, or the hosts, or any of the podcast guests or affiliated professional organizations. No person should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content provided in any podcast without first seeking appropriate medical advice and counseling. No information provided in any podcast should be used as a substitute for personalized medical advice and counseling. FSS expressly disclaims any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on or any contents of this podcast.